This video is about permutation with repetition. And it's also known as permutations of indistinguishable objects. And by the way, I believe that this, this second um, name is probably better, it's probably more descriptive. Um, what we're going to look at is ways to arrange things where some of the items cannot be distinguished from one another. In other words, they are uh, they're identical. Um, so let's take a look and see what I mean. My first question is this, is how many different ways can you arrange the letters in the word cat? Um, it'd, be, it'd be a nice little exercise for you right now if you could pause the video and try it for yourself. Why don't you go ahead and write the word, the letters out, C-A-T, and then write out all the different ways that, that you could write those letters in different orders, like C-T-A, A-C-T, etc. Write as many as you can. All right, I'm back. So uh, here, I'll help you out. Hopefully we agree here. Um, obviously, C-A-T is one. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and try to be kind of methodical here, like we did when we were learning about organized lists. Um, uh, C-T-A, uh, oh, that, that, there's only two choices with a C in front. Um, so let's go ahead and try A in front. We'll go A-C-T and A-T-C. And then there is uh, two choices with the T in front, so T-A-C and T-C-A. Now, I realize that none of the, that these aren't all actual words, but these are legitimate arrangements of the letters in the word C cat. And notice that we have three letters, and um, if we think about the fundamental, by the way, we ended up with six, uh, six outcomes, right? Um, there's six different ways. Um, and notice that um, we could have used fundamental counting principle. We could have said, well, um, there was three possible letters for the, the, that we could have chosen for the first letter. Um, then if I chose one, then there'd be two left over, and then one more for the third one, and that gets us six with fundamental counting principle based on dependent events, right? Um, so, but let's take a look at another variation of this problem. What about this? How many different ways can you arrange the letters in the word mom? That's an interesting question. Does it turn out to be the same as for cat? Again, pause the video for a moment, write down the letters, and see if you can come out with all the arrangements. Hopefully you did that. And uh, here, let's, let's see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try myself right now. We'll write out M-O-M, -M, and we'll write out M-M-O, and... Uh, and then I'm, let's see here, uh, I think I'm also going to write down O-M-M. -M. Now, I'm tempted to try to write other variations, like for instance, to switch the, first, the, the, the two M's, but the two M's are indistinguishable from one another. So for that reason, um, there's really only one arrangement of M-O-M, -M, even though there's two separate M's. So what ends up happening is, I only have three possible ways to arrange these guys. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, hey, um, is it possible that there's some sort of formula I could use um, in order, or some, some method or process that I could use to come up with this answer if I had a really big word? Um, and the answer is, yeah, and that's what we're going to look at. Um, also, let, let's add the note that the uh, letter M is indistinguishable. Again, I just wanted to make sure that you saw this as well as heard it, that the, the M's here are indistinguishable from each other, so we don't try to reorder them. So make a note of that. And let's try using this, this thing with a bigger situation. So let's figure out how many different ways you can arrange the letters in the word zookeeper. First of all, let's make note that there's nine letters in total. And if we were looking at just pure, pure, pure permutations, we'd say, well, the total number of ways I could arrange those letters is nine factorial. Um, in other words, nine ways I could, uh, nine different ways I could make the first letter, and then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Um, and I could, I, I would just go, oh, okay, like this: nine, nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one.
Um, but unfortunately, because there's indistinguishable objects, these E's are indistinguishable from each other, and these O's are indistinguishable from each other. For that reason, um, we're not going to get this many possible permutations. By the way, there should be multiply signs in between each of those. Um, so for now, we kind of have to forget. We have to kind of forget about all this. So that's tragic that I took the time to write that, but it's not going to help us out too, too much right now. Although it is kind of a starting point. Um, one thing that I can say is this, is that uh, uh, we're going to make up a fraction, and in the top part of the fraction, we will start with 9 factorial. But what we have to do is we divide out the repeats. So since I have, uh, let's take a look here, since I have uh, 3 E's, one, two, three, um, we're going to divide the nine factorial by three factorial. And since I have, um, let's try this, since I have uh, two O's, uh, we'll divide by two factorial. And this is kind of the trick that we'll use. Um, and uh, let's see, let me go ahead and make a note here so you can write this down. Just wanted to make a note here that the uh, so that you have it for your notes um, that the reason why we did this is because we divide by the number of repeats for each repeating object. So if we had other repeating objects, we would divide by them as well. And what this will do is this will get us the answer that we're looking for. So whatever the result is here, um, that will be the number of different ways we can arrange the letters in the word zookeeper. Um, I'm going to leave it for you as an exercise to go ahead and finish the calculation. Um, I, I will go ahead and put the end result so you have something to compare it to. Hopefully you got uh, 30,240. Um, if you did not get 30,240, I can tell you uh, that there's a commonly made mistake here. A common mistake is, is that uh, people believe that 3 factorial times 2 factorial equals 6 factorial, and it does not. Um, you have to multiply out the 2 factorial separately. Now, you can do some cancellation, uh, and again, be careful. You cannot cancel 9 factorial with 3 factorial. Um, uh, you, don't, you, you certainly don't get 3. You don't divide the 9 by the 3. But you can cancel the 3, 2, 1 in the 9 factorial. And so that's what most people do. You do 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4, and then you cancel the 3 factorial, and, uh, and you don't have to do 3, 2, 1. And then you still divide by 2. So why don't you try it again and see if you can get the same answer that I've got. Then I have a little extra challenge for you. Just to cement this knowledge in your brain, um, I believe it would be useful for you to try an exercise, and it involves counting and writing, and it involves a fair amount of work, um, but the work is good for you. It's like doing push-ups for your brain. Um, let's take a look at the words spam and book. Um, what I'd like you to do is try to figure out how many ways you can arrange each word and then see if you can use the techniques that we discussed to verify that dividing the repeats gets the expected result. In other words, they both have four letters, but one of these guys should not have as many arrangements as the other. And can you use our technique of dividing the repeats in order to calculate? But what you're going to try is you're going to actually try to make an organized list for both words and uh, you can pause the video. In a minute I'll give you a hint to show you how to get started, um, but I'd really like you to try on your own even before looking at the hint, and, uh, and then if you need the hint, take a look at it and see if you can finish the lists. Alright, so I've begun to write out uh, the list here. Um, I want you to notice something. Um, all, with the letter S in front, all I did is rearrange the, the last three letters. And as we should have expected, when rearranging three letters that are unique, um, we should have gotten six different ways to rearrange those. So this is just six arrangements of the last three letters with one letter out in front.
Now, in order to make the rest of the, the, in order to count the rest of the possibilities, I need to change the first letter. So now I'll go and write all, I'll write all these with M in front, and I'll rearrange the other three letters. Then I'll write all of them with, uh, with a uh, P in front, and then rearrange the other three letters. And I'd, it'd be nice if you could go ahead and finish the list. It'd be good practice, and then you'll count the total number of possibilities, and then verify with fundamental counting principle you got the right number. And then also let's try book. So I've begun to write out the possibilities for book here. Um, and you can see that the, the, since there's a duplicate, since there's two indistinguishable objects, um, the two O's, uh, I didn't have to write six different possible arrangements of the last three letters. I just wrote three possible arrangements with the letter B out in front. And then I put the letter K in front and then wrote three possible arrangements of B, O, and O. And again, you could do that and finish, uh, the, write the rest of the columns so that you've written out all the possible ways to write out book. And then use the divided by the repeat technique we just learned to see if you take the, no, the fundamental counting principle result from here and apply it to this, do you get the result that's expected? Now, uh, in a minute, I'm going to go ahead and spoil the, I'm going to tell you what the result should have been here and what the result should have been there, uh, down for books and for spam, and uh, you will check to verify and see if you agree. So, you should have had a total of 24 possible outcomes. Uh, for, remember we're still talking about outcomes, um, and it's because there's four events. Choose the first letter, choose the second, choose the third, choose the fourth. Four events, uh, four outcomes for the first one, three outcomes, two outcomes, one outcome. Multiply them together, we get 24 outcomes. Or write them out as an organized list. Down here, we should have had 12 outcomes. And the reason why is because whatever we thought we were, by the way, this it, we get this result here from 4 factorial. Down here, we, our result is based on 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial. And the 2 comes from the uh, 2 O's that are repeated. That's where, we get, uh, that's where we get the 2 factorial. And that result is just 24 divided by 2, which is 12. That's it.